So just as I do for pretty much every drawing or painting I do, I always start out with doing these thumbnail sketches, <clears throat> and thumbnail sketches are just, I draw three boxes on an A4 sheet of paper that are very, very small, and I draw one extra box which is quite large, which is about the size of an A4 sheet of paper. I always start the very first thumbnail sketch as a very, very quick one. It takes maybe 30 seconds or less, and it's just to get an idea of the first ideas on how this composition will work in my head. I initially thought about adding in that uh, wooden fence and gate, but I decided to scrap that idea very, very quickly because the whole composition didn't work. I wanted the painting itself to express freedom and express everything around that freedom idea and the light but the fence just didn't work for that at all. So for this I always use a 2B pencil because I find it is so easy to just very quickly jot down things, very easy to change the how much pressure you're putting on and as you can see from the very first one to the third one I spend a little more time on each one developing the ideas and coming up with how everything works and then for this fourth one which is a much larger, pretty much A4 sheet of paper that I've drawn on. I just, I do it much larger and get a really, really solid ground basis for the final outline. The final outline for this is what I'm drawing now, but it's the drawing that I will be transferring over to the canvas. The canvas was quite large. It was, I don't remember the exact measurements off the top of my head, but I had quite uh, some issues with coming up with the composition for the neck and I that was erased a few times but I eventually found one that really works nicely and <clears throat> I'm not going into details with the drawing but I just put in some shadows but I never transfer those shadows over onto the canvas. So here you can see we've transferred that sketch, a rough sketch uh, drawing over to the canvas and usually pretty much with all my paintings I will then do the outline. I'll go over the outline in paint, blue paint usually, and just I find that helps me see and guide exactly where everything goes. And I always do this in acrylic because I find oil paints smudge sometimes because I don't have the patience for the drying, drying time for doing a base layer and an underpainting. So once I've got everything sketched out, I will then do an undertone, which is usually a warm tone. This is done also in acrylics, it's just washed out burnt umber, which I do, I do for the background, but in hindsight I definitely should have gone over the entire thing, but after reading a few books I thought it might be quite a good idea to do the horse in a different colour, which would be a much warmer colour, because once again I was really working from this light and I wanted to achieve light which is also why I'm using the blue tones because I wanted it to both have cool and warm light which is definitely a very very challenging thing to achieve with a white canvas which is why I filled in absolutely everything in the horse in this dark orangey colour and as you can see I made a little bit of a mistake of where the horse's jawline ends which I then uh, correct a little later on. This section here I'm just using brown and light brown that has been washed down with some fast drying medium. This is once again acrylic. I find doing acrylic for my undertone and my base layer which is also known as the first layer I just find it works a lot nicer compared to oil paints because I, in my mind oil paints are always reserved for the highlights, the details and those tonal values. So once we've waited for that to dry, which is about two hours, maybe three all in all, I then have this idea that I want to create this vignetti around, I think it's pronounced vignetti but I could be wrong, around the horse and have that in the background. You might know this sort of technique from some old Rembrandt paintings where he's directing the viewer's eye line and the eye gaze to the subject itself. That is the whole purpose of using this technique and uh, anybody who does photography is also primarily used in photography. It's one of those things that you don't really notice but it's always there. 
and so I used black for that and I then mixed it in with some brown creating these dark brown tones and as you can see I've missed the jawline there because I'm a moron but I do go back and correct that and everything looks completely natural so I'm starting with very dark tones on the outsides and then as they move closer towards the subject itself, which is of course the horse, the tones get much lighter and more of this brown because I love that old rusticy look and I thought it worked so well for Chalky himself. After that, once again, I will go back using acrylics. These acrylics are not washed out and they are not, they don't have any medium implemented into them whatsoever, but this here I thought it was just all it is is the first layer putting down roughly where bits and bobs will go not looking too much at shadows but definitely also looking at the shadows I know that sounds so confusing but it's it's just giving me this rough idea literally just to block in and fill in get rid of all that yellow underpainting and <clears throat> get a rough idea of where everything's going to go so I painted in the mane, painted the ears. The ears were so much fun to do. Even though I did screw one of them up slightly, I then very easily corrected that later on. Um, everything about this section and this first layer is literally just putting in, just putting on as much paint as I think is necessary, but not using thick layers because as you can see, we can, it's, it's got transparency to it. That's what I really like about acrylics, is that they can be transparent for this first layer and that still allows that warm light to go through, to come through. And I used, for the colors, I only used white, lamp black, and some cream. Because when I looked closer at Chalky's mane, he was very creamy mane and I thought that was just a very big point I wanted to highlight but I didn't want the main to draw away the attention from him himself, so I wanted most of the attention on the eye, but something I found out about horse eyes is that they have almost no reflection in them, which was such a sad thing for me to find out, because one of my favorite things to draw, one of my favorite things to paint are eyes. I love how they work, and they're just amazing. So as you can see, I uh, fixed the mistake I made with the background and then from here I'm just setting down some high tones low tones and just as you can see just literally filling in the whole thing and still not looking for details at all because the whole painting was not about details for me in the slightest it was just all about light and everything here light, uh, I'm looking at light I'm looking at where the light light is and where the low light is the cool light also known as warm and cool light that was the whole purpose of the painting itself this still is acrylic paints and I'm just filling in the muzzle nose I'm not 100% what it's called I'm not good with horse anatomy but you can also see with the horse's eye it's just this black blob that had no highlights and had absolutely nothing and it. it was just black so later on in the painting I do end up going back and putting in some highlights because it just needed it I don't care what anybody says it just needed it no questions asked so for all of this I'm using about a one inch dagger brush which I find is quite easy to maneuver quite easy to manipulate the paint into each crevice and crack that is needed and then as I work through the painting and I get further and further along looking at where uh, the light and hair goes I do switch to a much smaller brush but as you can see we're just about to switch over to the second layer and for almost all of these layers I start with that left ear because I don't want my hand to be touching wet paint so <clears throat> for the second layer I've used oil paints and I always save my tonal best for last in which in this case would be uh, unfiltered titanium white which basically means there's no medium in that titanium white and one of the most amazing things that I loved about this reference photo so much was this amazing blue tone that just showed on the horse's nose and the front of his nose so much. It was just 
absolutely beautiful <clears throat> to me. So that was something I really wanted to draw attention to and I hope I've managed to draw quite a bit of attention to that nose and frontal section itself. That's the section I spent almost pretty much most of my time on but you can see those blue tones look like grey tones which is the thing that Bonnie Snowden actually taught me and suggested to me is one of the biggest things to remember is that what looks white is not actually white. There's always grey tones in there, there is always yellow tones in there and there are always blue tones in there. Occasionally there'll be some purple tones and that's one of the biggest things I did actually use in this painting itself was remembering that this isn't actually white. It may look white but all the different colours are blue and yellow and obviously white. I know it sounds very confusing but that's how the shades are made not just by mixing together black and white to create different tones of grey. Most of the shadow on the horse's face itself is primarily blue tones, cool tones, because warm and cool tones will uh, counteract with one another and they create those highlights and will show the definition of the horse's face. So I do go back and I, as you can see here, I will then put in a highlight on the horse's eye because for me the eyes are the window to the soul and they just need to be alive. Everything else for this painting didn't have to be detailed and had to be the most realistic looking thing in the world because it's not so much my goal to be a realism artist. It's a technique I love to do and I love to practice it, but I want to be an artist that isn't only focused on details, but does explore different things within painting. I don't want to be settled into one specific niche. I love painting and I love drawing. They, I have an equal love for both of them. I'm just not as good at painting as I am at drawing because I've had more practice in drawing. But continuing on with this second layer, as you can see, I do spend quite some time on this nose and muzzle and those blue tones are just so subtly hidden away in there that I feel they just, they're, they're both hidden away and subtle but at the same time they just, they, they pop out, they make the painting alive. All of these white tones that appear white are actually mixed in with a little bit of yellow oil paint and a lot of it is also cream because I found cream was such a lovely colour to use for the less prominent sections of the horse itself. So once I let that layer of oil paint dry, which took about two days because I was using fast drying medium, I then went back and I decided to put the background in oil paints because acrylic for the background just didn't work 100%. It needed that extra bit of glossiness. So as you can see, the background just looks so much smoother. It looks almost silky to me and I just love it so much that background also using that Vignetti again but then for this third layer I'm now coming back and you can really start to see those highlights coming in and really really just popping out of the painting and this is something I love to call the illusion of detail and I've read so many books about this details and how to put details in that I then eventually came across a book I think it was called The Illusion of Detail, but it was definitely about how the brain <clears throat> will trick the viewer into thinking and seeing these, these details, even though they're not always there. So one of the biggest tricks for drawing and painting realism and details is focusing on the details, but this sort of painting, which looks like a realistic painting, all I'm focusing on is the light and I'm looking at the contrast of where the light shadows are, the dark shadows are, where the light highlights are and where the dark highlights are. That must be one of the most confusing things I've ever said in my entire life, but trust me, if you pick up 
some oil paints or painting and you get into painting just a little bit and you watch some videos you very quickly seem to understand what I'm trying to get across to you one of the biggest influences in painting for me is for a contemporary artist is definitely Andrew Tischler he is one of my biggest idols in painting and I just absolutely love his work so much I'll definitely leave a link to his description a link to his social media in the description sorry because if you haven't heard of him or you haven't seen his videos please please go check his his work out he is just the biggest idol for me in painting so this is continuing on with that third layer and I don't always just work in one area and one section with any layer because I don't work on it finish it move to the next layer as uh, for the next section as I do with drawing because painting is so so different compared to drawing for one instance almost everybody knows this painting you start dark and you work your way up lighter with drawing you start very light and you work your way to darker tones but for this one I'm working back and forth different sections you can see the painting itself just start to evolve I wouldn't say start to come alive but the lighting on it just really is prominent there you can see where that Sun is just hitting him onto the nose and where those dark shadows are that are being formed by the roof and the windows <clears throat> one thing I did find is that Chalky is a very rugged horse he's not a racehorse he's not he's not just sleek a lot of him is very very almost woolly I would say I don't I'm sure there's an equestrian out there that knows exactly the word and I'll be criticized for not using the proper words but I'm not asking my sister because she'll know the surprise and everything <laughs> but as you can see his hair I come back to change his hair and I make his hair a little more silky a little more smooth because I felt it was just getting too much attention away from his face itself and this thing here you might know is what artists use to rest their hand on if they feel their hands too shaky um, I can't remember the exact name for it at the moment but I didn't have one near me I didn't have a bit of wood that I could stick that I could use so I just grabbed a got an old golf club sawed off the head of it and just used that because it, it, it worked and then I use that for all the tiny little bits where if I move my paintbrush in the wrong way it's going to screw up the whole thing and make it look really awful but I don't use that for these much larger strokes here and as you can see the paintbrush itself this is going back to a thing I mentioned a little while ago where I've just moved down in size for the paintbrush quite a bit and that neck I love the neck so much for that it's it adds depth it adds the contrast and something I thought was a little odd was that horses have whiskers which I didn't know about until I looked really closely at this reference photo and I thought yeah he just needs them call me a detail freak but it just needed them but yes I, I really hope you've enjoyed this video maybe you've learned something or maybe you've just enjoyed listening to me ramble I don't know maybe you stuck me on mute so you could just watch the painting just paint itself <laughs> thank you very much for watching if you liked it please leave a like consider subscribing thank you very much